Hey guys, so um, uh, continuing the uh, TK Enter um, videos, uh, here I've got open Visual Studio Code, which is just an IDE, and um, I really like this IDE, um, it's, it works for me, and I, uh, I've had no issues with it, and there's a lot of cool stuff in there, but um, there's a lot of cool ones out there like PyCharm and some others, so definitely check those out. Um, so, continuing kind of where we left off, um, I created that simple little dialog box, and the, the idea is to eventually create a, um, a, a window or a dialog box that somebody can fill in a BIM uh, um, execution plan and um from there uh they can initiate you know further steps like either sending an email automatically so as soon as they finish that um uh um dialog box as soon as they fill uh, finish filling in everything and then um click the finish button they can then uh you know, it automatically sends an email to maybe a BIM person or, um, or, you know, it does that along with, you know, initiating another process. Um, the cool thing is, is, uh, the firm I work for, uh, they are, were strictly BIM 360. So we don't have to worry about setting up projects on other platforms. So that means that we can automate a little bit some some other things um, uh, using BIM 360 and then some other tools, but um, are using the Forge API. So eventually we're going to take this a little further and see how we can, as soon as somebody clicks finish, that it initiates a BIM 360 uh, project getting, getting created. Um, that's it might be a little bit harder harder in Python. I've done I've used Postman and done that um it's really easy in there so um it might be a little bit harder in python but hopefully we can figure it out and then you can essentially create projects automatically um so uh to briefly talk about this what we've got is um a couple input uh boxes uh we've got the username and then down here we have uh the project number and then uh, below that, down here, we just have a function that is grabbing the username and project number. Um, and then I was kind of confused by this, but I thought, you know, if, if it was a global, if it was global username or, or it's a global, you know, variable or whatnot, that um, I could have it sitting outside or something, or I could call upon it in another function, but I was having some issues with that. So I just put this return um, down here, which formatting formatted it exactly how I needed it. And uh, down here, when I create the, uh, um, create the data, I, I do data equals values. So I just take in uh, this function, uh, which is returning username and project number, which is um, entry one and entry two of what you fill in on the uh, BIM, BIM execution dialog box currently. Um, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, and then da below, below the data, we have a data frame I'm using uh, pandas to create. So we uh, take the data, uh, which is just two entries or two columns, and then we create columns, username and project number. Um, and then we come in here and data frame dot two underscore CSV and the CSV's name. And then the mode is A for appending. And then I, I set the header to false. Um, and then down here, this is a cool function uh, from the uh, TK enter. So we say button one equals uh, TK dot button. And in this bit of code, we outline like what's in it, uh, what color it is, and then what command. Um, so the command we're running is BIM data, which is right now uh, this function up here. So um, when the dialog box pops open, we enter the values and then um, we run BIM data. And then finally it just finishes it finishes um so i'll 
the code's already running, so I'm going to pull it up and then we can take a look at it. So, so over to the right, you can see uh, this is just my project info.csv, and uh, the idea is that this CSV is going to store all the information. Um, CSV seem to be the easiest way to do this. Uh, there is a way to um, do this with a SQL server, which is probably more um, more of a uh, maybe a better place for this type of information. But um, but uh, creating a CSV is easy. It's you know anybody can do it um, through Python. It's just it's really easy and accessible. Um, so. We created the uh, um, CSV, and then this is what we're writing to for all the uh, project information. Now, currently, there's just two entries, but essentially, there could be somewhere around 100 to, you know, or 50 to 100, entry, you know, entries. And um, that information is going to be stored in each row. Um, so each each time a BIM execution plan is filled in, um, a new row row is created in the CSV. And the idea and with SQL, with the SQL server, it's easy to lock certain um, inputs. So you can say that the project number is always unique. So somebody can't sit there and put in a unique number. Um, so I'm going to have to look into that to see how we can control that with the CSV. How do we control things um, like project numbers not being put in there multiple times? I don't want somebody to be able to click this button um, and to continually um, add new entries which is something it does currently so we'll have to look at that as well but currently uh, with the code that you see is uh, um, as soon as I click this button so I can come in here and just type out my name and then just type out some project number um, and then as soon as I click finish you can see it updates the CSV over here So, and if I click finish again, it'll just continually, continually um, update it. But the idea is that somebody's going to fill this in, um, uh, and then as soon as they click finish, it'll send an email. It'll send, um, and it'll also create a BIM 360 project at some point. Um, and I don't want it to uh, let them, you know, do that over and over again because it could, you know, end up, you know, creating a bunch of projects. Um, sending a bunch of emails and then creating a bunch of uh, uh, um, new rows in the CSV. So um, this is what we've got so far. And to give you an idea of what the um, what packages I'm using, in case you want to set this up. So I created a virtual environment. This one's called TK Enter underscore Test, and um, and the and then here is the uh, uh, packages I'm using. Um, this requirements TXC file, you can use this when you're setting up your virtual environment for this project if you want to do the same. Um, I'll share this TXT um, uh, below. You'll find a OneDrive link. And I may set up a new OneDrive just called uh, data or something. And then you can find everything you know what actually um i'm going to store this up on my github and um you can grab it from there so definitely so just jump out to the github and you can you can grab the requirements and this requirements file may be updated at some point just because there's a lot of um uh there's a lot of things i still want to do so there may be some other packages i may have to use um so just keep that in mind um and i'll update all the stuff um, so you can easily download it. Um, so that is it. Uh, you, as you can see, this is really easy to set up there just to create this dialog box and capture that information. There's not a lot going on here. And I, and I, I showed you before that you can create a little um, Python script in uh, Revit using the PyRevit extension. You can add your own little Python scripts that you can have run um, executables and stuff. So in the future, we'll look at how to create 
one of those little buttons, which is really easy. And then we'll look at packaging up like this code here into an executable that we can eventually share to other machines and we can run. Um, also something to keep in mind with TK Enter is it's incredibly flexible in what you can do and you can make it really professional looking. Um, so there's a lot of things, you know, you can mess with and hopefully we'll get into that um, more in future videos. So I appreciate your time and thanks a lot for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.